tone is the scale of light and dark. Light exists in comparison to dark and vice versa. A cave underground without any light is pitch black, as is the universe without stars. Any crack of light from our sun or artificial light illuminates the forms, matter, making it visible to our eye. In a way, it's the forms themselves that catch the light, traveling in straight beams from stars and make light be able to be caught or seen. The interplay of light and dark is fundamentally how we're able to see three-dimensional forms. We can get a sense of space by the placement of these forms in front of us. We use tone to observe and make sense of the world and essentially move through it. A circle is one line that begins and ends when it meets its beginning. It's two-dimensional. To make this circle 3D to become a sphere, we use tone. There are changes in tone throughout this circle. It's not like we assume. There's no outline. The edges are not necessarily the darkest. They're not black. They're receiving light bouncing off the white backdrop or perhaps from the window nearby. The area closest to the light source will be the lightest. There is light and reflection in shadows. There's a wide range of smooth tonal variation on the surface of the object, which reveals to our eye the three-dimensional form and ultimately its texture as well. I think of tone as a navigational indicator, plotting points between three things. One is the viewer, which is here, the camera, the subject, and the light source or light sources. So looking at any scene, all three can be plotted. Any movement of these three things and the whole scene in front of us completely changes. So the viewer, uh, the light source and the objects are all completely interrelated and contingent on one another. Much can be deciphered by analysing the tone of objects. For example, the kind of light source and its position. If the light is close and intense, it will make shadows with really quite hard edges. They're harder, closest to the object, and then get a little bit softer further out. If further away, or the atmosphere is hazy, it will be more diffuse. So the edges of these shadows are, are really soft. One thing very important is the reflection of light in shadows. So I'm just holding up this paper here to, to show and this is lightening the right hand side of the cup and also the, the shadow itself. And I think observing that will really make the painting feel quite true and real. So we tend to exaggerate a shadow to show three dimensional form and it makes it look more 3D to us. But really, it's kind of important to see that nuance within the shadow. The other things we can decipher from tone is the material of the object. Is it absorbing or reflecting light? Is it transparent or translucent? You can kind of see that with the scrim, the, the silk material. Is it opaque, shiny, or matte? Wet or dry? Hard or soft? And its texture. And its shape, of course. For example, if we look at the, this uh, cylindrical cup and the light um, passing along its lip here, it shows its curved form. So these tonal still lives, which are predominantly white, greys, and black, show examples of limited tonal range. I think to key your eye in for observing, I find it really useful to look at the darkest dark and the lightest light of your still life and decide exactly how dark and how light they are. You know, importantly, it's really unlikely for this to be black and white. So in this black still life, the darkest dark might actually be in the coke were probably in some of the shadows of the painted leather. Um, 
this the leather reverse side is kind of gray um, there's highlight on the leather here but it's still pretty soft the lightest light I would say is on the reflection from the fluoros catching the corner of the table here in this still life the lightest light might be on the sage stick um, maybe some specks in here this is light but it's definitely no way near white there might not be any white in this still life the darkest dark is definitely the black of the burnt sage here but if we remove this um, maybe it'll be the tiny crisp shadow underneath the stone okay and then if we look at the uh, white still life the lightest light it helps if you take a black and white photo but maybe it'll be on the eggshell maybe it would be on the white perspex here the, ta ooh, the tapioca is not quite really white um, and the dark is dark, no way near black. Black being the black of the sage. Um, so the darkest dark might be in the shadow here. I guess it depends on your angle. Might be a spot on the cup. So tone is light and dark, most exemplified by the relationship of white and black. But color also has tone. For example, you can have a light red and a dark blue. One trick to really see the tonal values of colors is to take a grayscale photo. So once again, everything is relative and I think looking at tone, nuance and observation is key.